The double starring guns are back, baby. Akane has awakened them once again, and she enters this peak star mode. That's right, almost solar system level. And the battle against Kana is suddenly tragic because, yes, they were bantering before, but then we get the flashback of seeing, you know, baby Kana being so jaded as she's a veteran in the industry by the age of six. And Akane is showing up now. I'm not sure if that's her actual age. And Kana just gives Akane, like, the brutal reality of the industry. And Akane is like a new, you know, a new blossoming bud, so innocent and pure, and realizes that, that the hero that she idolized was not really the image that she had in her mind. But instead of being like sad or mad about it, she just like locked in, learned like psychology, reading people, understood what Kana was, and then even that skill set of trying to read people helps her act in her own way. Kana right now is refusing to take the spotlight. Because like Kana shines the best when she is more selfish and we want her to do that and Akane was hoping to bring out that selfish ego aside from Kana but Kana remembers the past when she peaked in kindergarten and remembers how hard and like difficult it was when she fell off so she now shies away from it and has found this kind of comfortable lead, comfortable role as like a supportive role and I think that was my interpretation of when Kana saw her like child self right before Akane was able to bring like that star side of Kana out, but kind of stopped. So maybe in today's episode, we'll have like Kana redemption. Let's begin today's reaction. Yeah? Kana. Akane looking divine. Look at that double starring gun out. Whoa, what was that? Look at that. This imaginary Kana right now. Looking at Akane. Smiling. But then you look at the reflection. And she's staring down the opposite way. Too deep for me. Maybe Himekawa's role is to bring that ego out of Kana out. Because we haven't really had much Himekawa interactions other than when he just shows up and people glaze him. But maybe Himekawa will be the reason Kana returns to her peak form. I think that's an excuse that she's making for herself. There's probably some truth there that obviously not everyone can be the star. But having two star roles synergetically work together might be better than just one star role with the support. Reading. <laughs> Air glasses. It's like, you know... He's reading through the lens. Air glasses? Is that a thing? Bro just can't see. He's blind as fuck. But it doesn't matter. Because as long as he himself does what he needs to do, everything else will work out. Huh. Interesting. And that's probably what makes him stand out amongst everyone else. So it's best I can't see the actor's impressions in the first place because motherfuckers in the back usually, most people can't even see it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, maybe it's just lazy justification. Devour! Devour, bro! Blue lock! Egoist! Oh, shit. Oh, wait, we're going off the script? Can we just do that? I wonder how much of the actors has, like, freedom to just ad-lib as they want during an actual run. Let's go. I'm the bell pepper kid. Okay, ad lib time. 2v2? 
族の敵お前だけはああ誰のことだいちいち覚えちゃいねえよ<笑>次よ仕方ない子ね I'm sorry, I don't know any of these fucking characters. <laughs> Because, like, not only are these actors not that important in terms of the lines that they've received in the anime script, and on top of that, those minor actors then are put in a costume. So there's like an extra layer of me not knowing. I didn't even know who they were in the beginning, then you put them in a costume. Like, I'm having a hard time figuring out who the fucking main characters are behind these fucking costumes, bro. But, like,. I think this is the white hair. Is this is she? Does she always have the white hair? I don't fucking know, bro. Yeah, the la 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 girls, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to remember, but like, I don't know. This guy might be my favorite actor, though, of them all. The salary man with the fucking glasses. I love his fucking role. <laughs> <laughs> I looks like Aqua won the clash here, huh? It's so like Himeko is basically the pinnacle of emotional rank, uh, emotional acting. Emotional acting is the thing that Aqua kind of sucks at. He got coaching from his like quote unquote stepfather, right? The one that took him in, right? The one that lives with his mom. And he delved into like the past memories of like insanity when mom died so that he can like go into emotional acting, right? I want you to know there is no reason for Megane right now to be holding the fan up while talking because he's not acting right now, but he still does it because he's so in character. Peak, peak commentary, Megane. Huh. Himekawa is fire, raw emotional acting, but because Aqua shows no emotion, somehow the gap moe, the contrast makes Aqua stand out even higher. The fuck? That's why he doesn't want to compete with them in emotional acting right now. Okay. Himekawa wa sonna kantan ni taisho dekiru yakusha nai desu yo. Tsuman ne na. Motta. Adlib. Adlib. <gasps> It's coming, the That's not part of the script. What? Plot twist. Hold up. But Aqua is supposed to be with Akane. But now Kana faction, we Aqua accidentally saves Kana. Wait, what's gonna happen now? Oh. Aqua says na na na. I'll fucking lead with the improv. She doesn't need no man. Oh, he's stunned right now. He's just shocked at Aqua's acting skills, I think. <laughs> you really just fucking called her plump and soft. <laughs> no muscles. <laughs> Peak improv. They're even having slice of life funny moments right now, man. Out of nowhere. <laughs> I guess so. なめないで。なめないで。なめてなどいない。すること ultimate support aqua bro. Kana can pop off now. So like 
in that okay still i still feel like this scene here was kind of making excuses on why she doesn't want to step up to the plate because of this the fear of falling off again but now the coordinator kind of seems like aqua right aqua is like the coordinator right now and then can help kind of shine <laughs> OP support? Oh, what the? Oh my god, yo, these are all the season one scenes. What the? Oh man, remember this? This was like the height of that arc, right? When the sweet days was saved by Kana and Aqua. Oh, the jealousy. The jealousy dinner, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they played baseball together that one time, too. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, man. The baseball. But then Akane happened. Aqua, Kana. I'm still not sure if they're going to be a romantically a thing, but they definitely shared a lot of moments together. Pio. Yo, remember that? Oh, my God. Remember the Pion mask? It was Aqua the entire time? Trying to cheer Kana up, and then he was even on the stage with the fucking lights. Oh, bro. He's always been there for her, man. Egoist coming out. Okay. So, a washed up mom that imposed her dreams onto a child that never wanted to maybe do it. Yeah, this is all for mom. Mommy riding on the coattails of her daughter's success to seem important and have like rich friends and you know famous people. Okay, it was fun for her. That's okay. But I wonder what happened when Kana fell off because things are when things are going well, right? Of course, it's easy to be happy and having fun. But when she fell off, I bet the mom fucking dropped her too. Easy to smile when things are going well. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. This is what happens, right? When things are going well in any relationship, Right, money is good, health is good, it's easy to be all smiles and fun, but when things get bad, that's when people's true nature comes out. That's cheating on mom! Oh, what the fuck, dude? I don't even think it's just the mom's fault, right? Because like, yeah, the mom probably did lash out on Kana, but mom was also vouching for Kana as a performing, you know, series of falling off, and why? was kind of falling off because her shit attitude right the, the kind of got like too much clout she felt too important as a fucking kid no one wanted to work with that bitch mom's trying to you know save the career nothing's going well mom lashes out that sucks but kind of also fucked up dad was cheating on mom everything is fucked up here <laughs> See, that's the thing. My mom liked the popular Kana anime. It was never about Kana. It was whether or not this was a popular girl or not, right? Just leeching. But it's pretty complicated. But Kana did fuck up. But so did mom. There's, it's, the fault isn't in one person. Dude, imagine the mentality of like a child like this faced with the stress. Gotanda, true. Brutal reality, man. And then this, right? Everything built up to this moment, and that's why Kana fucking like lashed out onto Akane. This scene will still be hilarious to me because it's they're still children. I get it that Kana has been working in it for a long time, but like this level of conversation happening to like Children is still so like absurd that it's like funny and sad. How dramatic the scene looks between two toddlers, bro. Look at the lighting, the voice acting. Yeah, and now this is the redemption arc, right? Nah.
what will make you happy though? That's the thing. Now I'm starting to realize that season one, this whole Oshinoko season one and two has pretty much been like a kind of redemption story if you think about it. Yes, of course, you know, Aqua and the murder mystery is important, right? Everything else is important. But like from season one, we got introduced to this girl as a fucking just rude little bitch. I hated her, dunked on her. But then she grew up and she fell off. Now she's trying to figure out how to get back. And then the idol thing with Ruby, that started to take off. And now she's more comfortable to get back into the spotlight. And now with this, she found like a comfortable role where she's supposed to be supporting and is too scared to be back in the spotlight. But now this is the moment. Like, oh, she took us so far. It's just kind of redemption saga. <laughs> Bro. This is the difference between Kana and Rachel from Tower of God. Rachel wishes that she was the star, but she'll never be the star. But someone like Kana that says, it's okay if I'm not the star, she will be the star because she doesn't want to be. Aqua always shining a light on her. From season one! <laughs> a timid? So you're telling me we're about to see like a rabid Kana? Just fucking growling and snarling on the ground? I'm down. Just do it! I wanna see rabies Kana! Damn. Let's go, Aqua. Aqua's always been there for Kana, man. Whoa, animation change! One, two, three, four, five. One. I think she has four. St five? Five stars per eye, <laughs> right? Hold up. Hold up. This is this is beyond solar system level. There's there's many stars. Remember, the star is the power scaling. Akana has two stars. Aqua has one star. She has like ten stars here. <laughs> Look, look! One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe six. I don't know. She has the entire fucking solar system in her eyes. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> Shooting stars? Represents Kana's eyes, the wishes. Amazing, bro. She's literally summoning fucking meteor strike shooting stars, bro, to represent like Kana's back, bro. Look at the stars. Every time the stars show up, obviously beyond my mean power scaling, you know, jokes. It's just like to represent an actor's like talent, their drive, their love for this. Yo, Akane stars are deactivated right now. Kana's just too important. Gotanda shocked. Gotanda, uh, mom and Ruby shocked. Gotanda literally just like, who is this girl? Yeah, kind of altered. Ruby loves it. When she is the star, when she is the selfish egoist. <gasps> she was never washed, guys! Oh, wait, star powers? Damn! Okay, Akane gushing. I thought Akane was like intimidating, but like this is the Kana that Akane wanted to see, right? This is the peak performance Kana that Akane wanted to bring out. How many stars is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's too many fucking stars, bro. The star aura. She has literally galaxy aura right now. My idol. My Oshi. <laughs> Yeah, what about you, Aqua? You gonna do something? I don't know, bro. You're inherently born with the fucking star eye that also turns into a dark star sometimes. That emotional acting that he was taught with Gotanda, when is that gonna show up? 
そういうかなちゃんが見たかったの勝ちたかったはぁっおっホーリーシェッハーライニングクセッ This is the princess death scene Okay, now this is where the emotional acting comes in Because the whole emotional acting is supposed to be for the scene where Princess Saya is dying in the arms of Aqua and Aqua is supposed to relate that to the past memories of episode 1 Uh oh Himekawa, you monster What? What is this? Her injury got healed, but I know this is supposed to be theater fucking fucking props and shit. This is not actually healing. Is this like glow in the light shit? Because it wasn't actually cut, but you could see like a mark there, right? So like this light is like theater prop where first you mark yourself with glow in the light like marker, but it hasn't been activated yet. And if this light then gets hit on that marker, then it like glows green is my interpretation of this scene. I mean, it's not gonna heal Saya princess, is it? Aqua, it's time. Your emotional acting. Here it goes. Sayahime. Himekawa, you monster. There's Yeah, he's just edgy as fuck. Panic disorder. He did have panic attacks. Panic disorder. He did have panic attacks. Panic disorder. He did have panic attacks. Panic disorder. He did panic attack on whim. Like, he can just... At will, panic attack time, and then emotional acting comes out. Torigo. He needs to figure out the trigger. No Torigo. We're supposed to find a trigger to prevent it from happening, but this motherfucker is trying to find a trigger so that he can make it happen on will. Yes, that guilt, being not be able to save her. What Tana knows. Yeah? You have a good idea? It's to find our murderer of our mom. Your laptop, bro. I don't think you really do have a good idea. Or he does have a good idea, and he's not aware. Because on that laptop, bro, I heard there's some important shit that we saw on the laptop screen. Or maybe it wasn't the laptop, but just his computer. Like, like, if the secrets of the murder is literally on his computer, isn't it fucked that, like, the answers for everything we wanted was in front of us, literally at our home? Just baited the entire time, because, like, that would be so poetic and tragic that, like, damn, this entire pursuit, it was literally at home. No one knows. No one knows, right? Of course they don't know, but, like, we know probably, right? Therapy? Nah. Damn. I am... An Avenger! Okay, Sasuke, we get to see the dark eye just like shining again. Look at that look though. He looks so crazy mad. What? You must no longer... Just hate it. Just despise it. Interesting, let him cook. Ah! Oh, no 
Thanks for acting. Yo, I've never seen the star like that before. I've never seen the star like that before. Himekawa actually looks shocked. If you look at Himekawa's face, I don't know if that's like purely acting from him or if he realized like, what the hell? This guy knew how to act like this. <laughs> But you need to hate it. He's the anti-actor. Suffer as you perform? Or find fucking roles that doesn't always overlap with your past. But I guess in these roles, if everyone is having fun, right? For Aqua, in order for him to like find that trigger, he needs to fucking be mad. I don't really understand. But he needs to suffer, right? Because if you're... Look at that eye, bro. Look at that dark star. Because, like, Gotanda was saying, you know, I get it. Sometimes you're having fun, you're getting caught up with it, then panic attacks, shit, blah, blah, blah. But now, in order for you to, like, really hone into the acting, you need to suffer, hate this shit. This piano is amazing. Dark powers! <laughs> the soundtrack, man. Dude, look at that eye! Ai. Ai. Wow! Damn! I'll defeat you all! Dude! This shit is so edgy. And we make a lot of jokes about how edgy Aqua is. But this is some genuinely good fucking edgy. I thought today's episode was going to be Kana's time. Nah. Aqua literally said, fuck you, Akane and Kana. I'll defeat you both. For me, acting is revenge. Dude. This is deep. This is peak. Dark Aqua! Kushida! Peak, bro. Trigger, man. Oh my god. And I thought today's like, episode again was gonna be Aqua centric. Oh, sorry, Akane sorry, Kana centric. And it was for the first half. And I thought this was gonna be it. Like, great. Kana popped off. Amazing. I'm happy for her. But it's like, nah, bro. Nah. The real shit was this last half. To Aqua. Acting is not fun. It's suffering. It's revenge. And now, obviously, Aqua's walking on the path of vengeance. He wants revenge. He's super edgy. The dark star, you've seen it over and over. I like this development. A lot of people don't like Aqua because of how edgy he may seem. But from the beginning, his determination has been to figure out who killed her, his mom and get that revenge as a child, remember. So all of those emotions coming to a boiling point and realizes that this is how he will defeat these stars. If you guys are, you know, cosmic solar level with these, you know, light stars, then I will be the fucking dark star. I love it. I love this entire fucking direction with Aqua and the imagery, the visuals, the soundtrack. The soundtrack with the piano riffs at the end reminds me of Oshinoko episode one at the very end when it ends. There's this piano soundtrack. I'm not sure. I, you guys can go find it, but that's one of my favorite soundtracks. This gave me that same level of vibe. Now, on the other stuff with Kana, you get to see a little bit more backstory with their mom, family, right? Everyone was happy due to the child's success, but of course, as she falls off due to her bad, you know, uh, behavior on sets, she starts to fall off. Mom no longer treats Kana the same way. Mom got cheated on by dad. Family just, just you know, just abandoned. It's so sad. But then Aqua was always there. I remember, you will never, like, Kana doesn't need to say she is the star. Other people will shine a light on her. Unlike some characters like in fucking Tower of God where they're so selfish that they think they're the star, but they're the last person to deserve it. Kana popping off was amazing, but, and Akane gushing over Kana was hilarious, but, Damn, this Aqua shit, oh, the dark eyes, this shit's fucking peak Oshinoko. I just hope that more people will watch this, but that's it for me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content, and until next time, take care.